The new stamp set by Teresa Momber called Up and Away is a fabulous set for tons of different stamping techniques. Today on Stamp TV, I want to show you how pretty the smack and acetate technique looks when paired with these beautiful hot air balloons. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this technique. First, you're going to need some cardstock, and I am using the Gina K Designs 80 pound white cardstock. And then, because I'm going to do a little bit of Copic coloring, I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. I'm also going to use my Niji water brush, and I do have this filled with water. I'm also using a Ranger Mini Mister, and this is filled with water as well. Then I'm using two of the Gina K Designs reinkers. I'm using the Ocean Mist and the Innocent Pink. I'm going to need some scissors for my card and some adhesive. And then I'm going to be using various stamps from the Up and Away stamp set. I'm going to use the large hot air balloon, the medium hot air balloon, and you can use the small hot air balloon too for this technique if you want three different size balloons. For my card, I'm going to have two different size balloons and just do two of the medium ones because I want to color and do a little bit more technique work. And this one is a little bit harder to color. Might be easier to paper piece or just color in with a solid color and do a little texturing. Then I'm also going to use two of the cloud stamps that come in the Up and Away stamp set and the happy birthday greeting. And for Copic markers, I have just a few here. I have the R46, which is strong red, BG15, which is aqua, R20, which is blush, R83, which is rose mist, and I have a Copic colorless blender. And you can use either the sketch markers, the chow markers, or the original markers, whichever ones you want to use. They all work very well for any of the techniques that you'll see on Stamp TV. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to start with a sheet of acetate. Now this particular piece of acetate is what came with the Up and Away stamp sets. When you get our clear stamps, they're all adhered to a piece of acetate. And I just peeled all the stamps off and put it on the binder sheet that comes in the stamp set. And then I use this to put on top to protect the stamp sets from sticking to one another or binder sheet to stamp set when I put them in my binder box. And these acetate sheets can be used for stamping techniques as well. So that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to start with a little bit of the ocean mist and I'm going to just draw a couple of lines going across like that. Then I'm going to add some of the innocent pink. You can do this any way you want. These reinkers are so much fun to play with. You can watercolor with them. You can color with them. You can do all different kinds of stamping background techniques like shaving cream and lots of others. Okay, so my next step is to grab this Niji water brush and I am going to squeeze a little bit of water out into the tip. You can see the water there on my hand. I just want to make sure that that water is flowing to the tip of the brush. And now I'm going to start by just adding some water to the innocent pink first. So I'm watering that down real well. And then I'm going to go back and add some to the ocean mist. And I'm going to bring my ocean mist into the innocent pink in different spots. And then just for a stroke of good measure, I'm going to give it a spritz with my mini mister. And give that just a second. And then I'm going to lay this piece of cardstock right on top and smack it right onto that ink. And you can see that is the effect that I got. Now if you have a little shallow spot, don't worry about that. You can just reactivate a little bit of the ink and you can lay that spot right onto that ink and pull it up and that'll add a little bit of ink into that area. There you go. 
Okay, so this will just clean up real easily with a paper towel and a little bit of water since our marker, our, uh, rather our re-inkers and our ink pads are water-based. They're very easy to clean up with just water and you can see that's nice and clear again and ready to store stamps on or whatever else you want to do with it. Okay, so now I'm going to give that a chance to just sit and dry. It is a little bit damp and it will curl when it's damp, but that's okay. You can just kind of straighten it out and just let it sit for a minute. Now I have another piece of white cardstock here and I'm going to ink up these balloons and I'm going to stamp them onto this piece of white cardstock. There's one and then I'm going to do two of the smaller ones. There's another one. And again, it doesn't matter where you stamp these because you're going to cut these out using a pair of scissors. So there we go. Now I have my three balloons. And now it's time to do a little bit of fun coloring techniques. So I'm going to start with the R46, which is the strong red. And I'm going to color the bottom of this balloon this whole section right here. I'm just going to color that in solid with that R46. I'm going to leave that little stripe there on each of those little panels white. So I don't want to get on there, but then just coloring nice big broad strokes. You don't have to be careful. You're not doing any shading with this. Just coloring it in. There we go. And then I'm going to color this basket red as well. Now I'm going to color these balloons up here. I'm going to add some red to these. So I'm going to start right up here with this one. And then I'll color this one. This one's going to be a multicolored balloon. Well, I guess they're all going to be multicolored, but this one's going to have different color stripes. And then this one as well, this one's going to have different colored stripes too, but this one's only going to have two colors. So I'll just do every other one on this one. And I want these all to coordinate with one another. And I want to bring in some of the color from that smack and acetate background. So I'll do that next. So there is my R46, that's strong red. And you don't have to worry if you go out, the, out of the lines because you're going to cut this out anyway. So then my next color is the BG15, the aqua. And I'm going to color the top of this balloon in that color. And again, leaving that stripe white because I like that contrast there. And then we're going to bring this same color into these other balloons. Make sure we have good solid coverage there. And you can see with our 80 pound cardstock, this will bleed through onto the back. So you want to make sure that you have your work area protected with some sort of mat or with a, an extra piece of cardstock. If you are worried about that, you can use our 120 pound weight cardstock. That does not bleed through. You can see I'm randomly choosing a few of these to color in this aqua. So you can uh, put anything you want underneath. Just make sure that you've got something under there so it doesn't ruin your workstation if you're using a nice wood or something like that that you can't use stamp cleaner or alcohol on to clean it up. Now this one is going to be every other stripe with the aqua. Almost done this, and now I'm going to show you how I add a little bit of texture to these to make them look a little bit more fun. All right, and I think I'll color the bottom of that aqua, and I'll color this little part the red. 
And then I'm going to bring in one more color, and that color is the R20. Now this is a blush color. This is what coordinates with the Gina K Designs Innocent Pink. So if you want a nice pink marker, this blush Copic marker is a great color. And I'm going to add that to this balloon, and that's going to tie in those background colors from the Smack and Acetate. Even though it's all going to be in one balloon, it'll still tie it in very nicely. And I think I'll add a little aqua right there. So I'm making each one a little bit different. Okay, so there's the three balloons. Now the next step is to pick up the colorless blender. Now I have the original one, but you can use the sketch one, you can use the chow one. The brush tip has a very fine little point, so you can do the same kind of detail work with those if those are the markers you have. The first thing I'm going to do is add some lines going across this balloon. And you can see I'm just making big stripes. And this is gonna add a lot of texture into this particular balloon. And I always go over it twice. Once I get that texture in, you can see it's starting to show up. I like to go over it a second time because it really brightens those lines quite a bit. And just that little bit of texturizing does so much. Okay, so now I'm going to go the opposite way up here on the aqua. And you can see you don't have to be real particular about where you're putting the lines. You just want to kind of space them out just by using your eye. And the different direction up top really adds something to the to the balloon. So there is the texture going in the opposite way on that one. Now for this one, I want to do every other line in a different direction. So this one, I'm going to go down with tiny little lines, just a few of them. And I'm going to do the same thing on this. Sometimes you have to wait a second before the color starts to lift so you can see where to color again. You can see the texture building in this particular one. And the same thing over here. And then using the same technique, Going in the opposite direction, I'm going to do the red. You can go do all the red ones and then go back and add your second line. That might help you see the lines a little bit better. I know it helps me a little bit here. Now I can see those lines coming out. It just lifts the color just enough to give it texture, but not stop it from looking like a red balloon, a red and turquoise balloon. You can see that little bit of texture there. Now for this one, I'm just going to do dots. So I'm going to do little tiny circles all over. And you'll be able to see them start to appear. And what's nice about the Copic markers is you can go from color to color without cross-contamination. You won't be bringing any color from your blue into your red or from the red into the blue or even if you were going to a lighter color. It just doesn't do that. That colorless blender kind of just dissolves the color right off the edge and you don't really have any problem with that. See, I'm going back over those dots again to get them a little bit brighter. And as this starts to dry, 
it all becomes much more pronounced. So if you can't really see it here, you'll be able to see it by the time I'm all done cutting these out. They really kind of start to make an appearance as everything dries. And then since that pink is so light, I'm going to use the R83. That's the Rose Mist. And I'm actually going to just add some lines going down. Like that. Since you wouldn't be able to see that anyway. So now I have three beautifully textured balloons and my next step is to cut these out. So I'm going to get working on that. Now I have all the balloons cut out and you can see the texture is really popping now that they've had a chance to completely dry. So now I'm going to take this particular piece and I'm going to adhere that to a piece that's the same width but a little bit longer and that's going to give me an opportunity to put the greeting down at the bottom of this piece of cardstock. So I'm going to do that with a little bit of mono adhesive and because this paper is a little bit curled from having so much water on it, I'm going to make sure that I do get all along the edges so that it lays down nice and flat. So tighten that up in there. And that'll help everything lay a little bit flatter. Now I'm going to stamp that greeting along the bottom. And these are very easy to position because they you can see right through them, these clear stamps. So excuse my head if it gets in the way. I'm going to stamp that down just a hair because I want to add some ribbon. So there's the happy birthday. I have a little bit of black gingham ribbon that I'm going to add just to cover that raw edge there. So I will do that, trim a little piece off there. And I'm going to actually tape the entire piece of ribbon. This way it'll lay nice and flat. Place that where I want it. And then wrap it around the back. You can move that before it becomes permanent. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So. Now, if you want to, you don't have to, you can add some of those stamped clouds in there if you don't want to use just the clouds that are here. I'm going to do that just to show you one way that you can do this. You can take any black ink, you can use the Memento or the Gina K Designs black ink, and you can ink up this cloud and then stamp it off once and then add a cloud like that. Do another one down here. And I think I'll do a few of the small ones. I like to stamp those off once though beforehand because then it's a little bit lighter. Of course, you can use a soft gray if you have that. But since I'm just using the black here, I wanted to show you how easy that is to stamp that off. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this Ocean Mist ink. I'm going to just put a little dab of it onto this acrylic block. And then I'm going to dilute it a little bit with my water brush. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of that color into the clouds here just to accent them a little bit more. See that? And you can go a little bit outside the lines if you want. just to add a little bit more to those clouds. And if you have any shallow spots, you can always fill that in as well. If you have some white spots that you don't like, you can add a little bit in there with the water brush. So let me show you now the next step. I already have part of this done. 
what I did was I mounted my panel onto a piece of black onyx cardstock and then I laid the whole thing on top of a red hot card base. And I added some quarter inch pop dots to the backs of these balloons because I think they look really pretty when they're just kind of raised off the card a little bit. So you can position these where you want on your card. I think I'll put the big one here. And I'm just going to lay them there until I make sure that I really like the way they look and then I'll press down on them. This one up here. And this one with the blush color in there, that innocent pink, can go right about here. So that looks good to me. So I'll just press down on those. And there is my finished card project. When doing the smack and acetate technique, don't limit yourself to blues and pinks. Try rich oranges, lilacs, and purples to create other variations of beautiful sunrises and sunsets.